Everybody, my name is Tim. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be doing a uh, Houdini engine for a real tutorial uh, about some sort of a workflow that I that I found out and I started using. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a common workflow, it's just something that I stumbled upon when I was trying to do some things with uh, Houdini engine when making my game. If you want to know more about the game I'm making, you can see that with the link in the description. Uh, but I was trying to find a way in order to sort of extract variables from actors inside of Unreal and then sort of apply them in my Houdini digital asset in order to do some other things. Um, so I've come up with a workflow. Again, I'm not sure how common this workflow is, if there's better ways or whatever. Uh, there are some limitations as well, which I also discuss. But um, let's just dive into, into, into Unreal Engine and I can show you what I have done. So we're here inside of Unreal and I have a uh, Houdini digital asset here. So this is using Houdini engine and just like any asset uh, I have, essentially I have put it to world outliner and I have put in three actors here and I am scattering a fern uh, from Megascans. As you can see that's over there, uh, pretty basic stuff. And then I have some things here in order to sort of set the density for all of my actors. Set the P scale for all of my actors, all well and good. So just generic Houdini digital asset stuff. Uh, where it's a little bit different is that you can see these actors here from the outliner. Uh, what I actually can do is I can actually grab one of these, these things here and they, you can see they, they have variables here. And I can actually use those to override certain things. So for example, this one has a density of, of, of one. If I put it to 0.1 and I need to actually re recook here. Uh, you can see I can actually change the density based on a variable that's that's on one of my actors. Uh, which you can see, I mean, can be pretty useful if you're uh, building things and for some reason now it doesn't do anything. Did I cha actually change anything? All right, let me let's put it up and we cook. All right, there we go. All right, so let's let's go through how this how this sort of works. Uh, so here, so these actors uh, are essentially here my, my actor class, uh, and they just have a static mesh um, in here, which is is for now it's it's a grid, but you you can you can you can throw other other things in here. Uh, so do I have something else? Uh, not right now, but you, you can you can throw another mesh in there, and it'll it'll still work. Um, but uh, let me just make one. Just make a no, no. What? No, no. You, you, you know, you know how to do one. Uh, it, you, you can just throw something in there. Anyway, if we open it up, uh, you can see here is these, these, these variables uh, that I've made public, so you can, you can change them. Um, you can see I, what I'm. So how I'm actually doing this? I'm, I'm setting a scalar parameter on materials. Uh, so I'm just grabbing this, the static mesh that I have there, and I'm just writing it out uh, to a material. Um, so essentially. Uh, you can make custom parameters on a material. Let me just, so let's just grab the material. So let's dock this. Let's, let's grab the material. You can see it just, it's pretty much just a empty material. I'm not doing anything with the material, but they have two parameters here. You can have as many as you want. Like if I wanted another attribute here, I could just set an, or I could do a, a vector parameter, for example, um, vector parameter on materials. And then I could, so I could, for example, Call it uh, albedo, and I could give it a color, and then I could make one in here, and then and then I could essentially write into it over there. So um, essentially, I'm using a sort of a placeholder material as a uh, placeholder for data, essentially. Um, so this just holds the data. So that's just assigned here to the static mesh data material. Um, and then from there, we can actually start using it in um, in Unreal Engine or in Houdini Engine. So um, you can we can put Unreal Sync Unreal to Houdini here, and then we can open a Houdini Session Sync. And then Houdini Session Sync, uh, yeah, I know. What is it then? Houdini Session Sync will essentially um, sync your Houdini session and your Unreal viewport, uh, which is quite cool. Yeah, generate new icons. Yeah, I, I, I put the UI scaling up a little bit because I was going to be 
because it was way too small for recording. And all right, there we go. So you see nothing is here yet, but if we now go back into Unreal and if we press recook, so it's gonna recook. And we go back to Unreal here. You can see a lot of notes appeared. Uh, so essentially these are the notes that our uh, Houdini engine is using. So we can go in our variables attributes, HDA, which is here. You can see we have the same plans. Uh, ignore the colors. That's just, I guess, coming from Megascans itself. Um, and this is super useful because you can explore some of the attributes and what everything is doing, which really helps doing um, doing uh, HDAs. Because you can, so you can have a look here. You can see all of the attributes, for example, from the Megascans thing, from the grid, etc., etc. And here is our HDA. Um, if you didn't know how to make HDA, you probably do, because if you don't know how to make HDA, there's, there's, there's other tutorials for that, but um, essentially you just do a uh, subnet, you just do digital asset, create new, you can put it there. Um, if you want to see more sort of dedicated tutorials on, on, on me doing just a general um, Houdini engine, maybe introduction or something like that. I can, I can, I can, I can do that, but, uh, let's change how, how, how you do that. And it's going to be a good idea to sort of keep your HDA in your real, uh, folder else is going to make a U asset for it. And, uh, essentially it kind of gets a little bit confusing on where everything is linking from. Um, so probably keep it in there. Although I'm, I'm still getting used to, to this workflow. Um, anyway, so. From here, we can we can we can have a look at all of the um, all of the attributes, like I mentioned. Um, so let's 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 open this thing up that we have here. So we can allow editing of columns. We can dive in. And let me let me just actually make my uh, my regular old viewport. All right, and let's go in here. So we have a little bit more to look at. All right, there we go. So you can see, there's not not that much going on here, but. Here we have uh, essentially just the actors that I'm scattering on. You can see if you go to primitives, you see all of the attributes that are here and they will be called, all of the Unreal stuff will be called with Unreal underscore and then whatever. If you want to know about all of these attributes, you can actually go to, not to this, but to this. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll put this link in the description, but this is super useful. You can see all of the attributes, uh, what their name. So if you're going to go from Houdini to Unreal, this is all of the stuff and uh, sort of what type they need to be, etc., etc. You can find here. So there's there's a lot of cool stuff here. And I've been experimenting with it quite a lot lately. Uh, here's if you want to go from Unreal to Houdini. So this is it's a little bit less, but that's, that's kind of the stuff that we're using here. That's also how I kind of got the idea to start using materials to, uh, to do what I'm doing here, because there's not something specifically here for... Uh, loading attributes, but um, I mean, there's there's one for materials, which is which is almost as good. Um, anyway, we have our density here, as you can see, it comes in as Unreal Material Parameter Density and Parameter P Scale. You can see them in here. Uh, so in here, we're just I'm just promoting them uh, just to make them make the names a little bit more convenient, essentially. Um, so primitive to point, and then we're going to go over here. So you can see density and P scale. And then I have, um, here just a simple wrangle with just multiplying the P scale uh, by the uh, P scale value over here. That's essentially just our sort of our HDA override thing, which sort of just does it globally. Um, so it grabs essentially the P scale from the actor, and then you have the override, same for density. Um, and then essentially we're just scattering on it, copying to it. Um, and then this essentially comes in as, um, uh, as attribute of our, as, as, uh, as uh, instances in, um, in a real engine. So it's actually a lot of cool stuff here that you can do as well. So if you go, for example, in here, you also have here a real split instances. And for example, that, that can be used to split instances inside of, I'm not using that right here, uh, but you can see here, we're getting just one instance mesh. But let's say we want sort of a different instance patches for each of these things. So we can maybe assign like a different material or something like that. We could do, we could go in here and I'll make a, uh, let's do attribute create. Attribute create. Attribute create, yes, all right. 
go in there. Uh, needs to be, let's have a look. Needs to be either on detail or on primitives. So let's do it on primitives. And it needs to be string, string. And then we can say here, here you go, or here, here you're gonna say, say the name. So we want the attribute to be called Unreal Split Instances. And uh, all right, should probably do that before. Or we, yeah, we should do that over here probably. Um, and we want to split by. Maybe let's have a look at what we could use for that. We could go in here. Let's say. Um, actor path. All right, so we want to probably split by actor path because it's going to be our unique path. I'm not sure if we still have that here, so we probably transfer it over. We could. We still have it here. We could. Oh, we could. Yeah, if we if we just keep it here, um, I'm gonna put it on. Yeah, because it needs to be on primitives. So you cannot put it on point. Uh, oh, wait, I think I have the wrong split here. Oh, split attribute. That's the one that we need. All right. That can be on point as well. Sorry, I had the wrong one. So split attribute and we want to split by our, where is it? Unreal actor path all right so that's gonna create a split attribute it's still gonna be over here I'm gonna create it as, we're gonna create it as a point so that's still gonna be over here when we have it on point and then it still should still be here as well all right it's gonna split it by the actor path let's see if this actually works we do go out here save note type go in here let's see Cook it and it didn't do anything yet. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't have the it doesn't have the uh, the actor path anymore. So we, pr we probably need to transfer that over. All right, let's transfer that over. You should probably do this stuff a little bit more organized, but uh, where is it? Actor path. All right, here we go. So now we should have an actor path over here. All right. So it should start splitting it with by the actor path. Let's see if that's uh, any string, right? Um, I think it should be good then. Save it out. Let's try it again. Oh, okay, yeah, you can see now we have individual patches here. Uh, so we could, for example, go in here and uh, make like, uh, I'm not sure which attribute is it, M Lady Fern. Do a copy of this one. All right, good. Do a uh, do a color overlay. We get that one, and then that one. Let's make it blue. I was trying to get this to work with attributes um, on instances. Uh, I got it to work with regular geometry, but I couldn't get this color, this this material override to work yet, uh, like this. But I'm sure there's a way to to do that. Um, but you can see uh, lots of cool stuff here to sort of uh, to experiment with. Uh, so if you want to download this project, you can do so uh, with the link in the description. It's going to be on Patreon, so it's going to be for Patreon supporters, and it's going to be on Gumroad. So if you want to download this to play around with, uh, links will be in the description. Uh, without wait, if you like this video, leave this a uh, thumbs up. That will help out YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more of this stuff, make sure to subscribe so you see more of my stuff. I'm doing devlogs for my game as well. I'm doing more of these tutorials. Uh, so if you want to see more Houdini and Unreal content, then uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, anyway. Uh, without the way, see you in the next one. Peace.